it might sound like the obvious thing to say at a time like this, but the fact is that it's an honour and privilege to be standing here as a CEO of the Fremantle Football Club. I don't need to remind anyone in this room that Fremantle itself is one of the most significant historical regions in Australia when it comes to our game. It's given rise to some of football's greatest ever players, uh, along with over a century's worth of stories, fables and incredible games of footy. So to be involved with a club that bears that name is something that's not lost on me. Like many in the room here today, um, I've spent a lifetime in and around footy in one form or another. Um, and my experience has been deep and varied and I um, consider myself fortunate to be so closely attached to our game. Uh, when I was working through the process of this role, the thing that stuck out more than anything else was the opportunity that this club has in front of it. Our membership and supporter base is as significant as it is, um, as it is diverse and passionate. Our people are talented and driven. We prepare, train and play in world-class facilities and all the while living in an incredible city that has a lifestyle and a climate that's second to none, certainly better than where I've been. Um, you combine all of that and there's a fair bit to like about this opportunity at Fremantle. Um, the foundations of this club have been laid by some great football people and our ongoing and overriding drive and focus will revolve around our people. This morning I met a good portion of our management team and staff, a sprinkling of the football department, and I just can't wait to get to work with them as we set about realising the opportunity that this, has, this club has in front of it. Um, my background and experience has helped me see and understand the importance of continuing to build a team ethos and a values-driven culture in delivering sustained success. We'll take a measured and assured approach to getting better every day. Um, I don't believe there's any silver bullet in this game and we won't be looking to overcomplicate things. We want to develop and support the great people that we have, at we, club, uh, we have at the club. We want to bring great people into the areas in which we need them and we'll get to work. I'd like to take the opportunity of thanking Dale and the board of the Fremantle Football Club for providing me this honour to help lead the club into its next phase of growth and success. As Dale mentioned, my wife Lucinda and our children Bridie, Thomas and Sonny are incredibly excited about joining the Fremantle family and the adventure that we're about to undertake. I'm more than happy to take any questions. So I'm a bit going on at the moment. Do you dive in straight away? Uh, I do have to um, do the right thing by my previous employer. So I'll be starting from a full-time capacity from mid-November or so. Um, but clearly uh, the mindset is pretty strongly within the four walls of this organisation and I, I can't wait to get um, into those key issues and core issues. But we've got an incredible management team who are, as Dale alluded to, who were running the ship uh, in the last few weeks while there's been some, some appointments being made and I'm really comfortable with the decisions that are being made at this point. You were CEO of the Western Bulldogs for four or five years. You went away from footy, you're still involved as a, as a director. Like, yeah. What did you learn in your time away from football? Um, yeah, it's interesting because it's, it's such an incredible environment and it was certainly not one that I had any aversion to coming back into at any point in time. But there was a, a fantastic opportunity completely removed from footy, as you mentioned, within Bastion that, that came in front of me. And I really wanted to, um, I suppose, get out, not of the comfort zone, but to, to broaden my skill set and experience. And, and that was something from a commercial perspective um, and a whole range of other areas that I think are going to certainly um, equip me second time round in this type of role well. There was a fair bit happened during your time at the Bulldogs as well, Simon. What did that teach you, do you think, about being a CEO of the um, Yeah, I had five unbelievable years at the Dog in, in that role and it was, a, it was an incredible time because I started uh, at, the, at the beginning, or the end of 2010, so we just played in the third prelim in a row. Um, but we certainly had an understanding of the club that we needed to build a football, not only team, but a, a department to be coming up to, to competition benchmark levels. So there was a hell of a lot that went into that and I, I still maintain the experience I gained out of that was incredible. Um, obviously left it at a time that was on the precipice of the ultimate success, which was fantastic. And I think just, you know, being a bit older and wiser, understanding that um, there's some things that are hard to learn unless you've been through those circumstances. So having been through that experience, um, stepping out for a while and having a, a phenomenal experience at Bastion, um, staying in touch to a degree from a, a board perspective. Um, yeah, it, we, we talked a bit during the process. It felt like a, an, a really suitable time for me and, and also for the Fremantle Football Club for someone like me as well. Do you feel there's some similarities, I guess, then, given the, your new coach, a lot of talk about the new era here? Yeah. From your time at the Dogs as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, 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 
played a, a significant part in the appointment of Luke um, just before I left. Um, there's certainly similarities as, as clubs. The, the, the dog supporter base is incredibly passionate and I've seen firsthand what the Frio supporter base can be like. It, it, I still have this enduring memory of walking off Subiaco Oval as a player, unfortunately, um, in a loss which wasn't unusual um, coming over here. But that TNT Fremantle experience, which I wasn't aware of, and it just struck me. And um, that's something that, you know, is, is incredibly powerful. And so to come to a club that has that and has the opportunity to build upon that is, is pretty exciting. Simon, the membership dropped 7.5% last season. Um, what do you need to do to bring those people back? Yeah, we need to engage with them. I mean, you know, the reality of it is um, most of the football metrics, commercial metrics that we all talk about and... and look at regularly are uh, very dependent upon on-field performance. So very much aware of that. Um, really, you know, in reality, we started last year in a really strong fashion. Some injuries and you know, exposing young players meant that it probably didn't finish as, as well as what we'd like, but that'll be a core focus. Um, a new relationship with the stadiums in its infancy, you're still figuring that out and how can we engage our fans and supporters in that really well. So the whole host of ways to ensure that we can We've got a different approach now coming from Subiaco over to, to Optus Stadium. There's a fair bit for us as an organisation to adjust in that sense. So there's, the, the greatest thing about that is the opportunity as well. Do you feel you've got the right people in place for your part to turn quickly? Yeah, yeah, I do. Look, it's, it's again, um, qualification that is, I haven't started in the role from a full-time perspective, but I've got a massive amount of respect for Peter Bell. I um, unsuccessfully tried to chase Belly around for a fair bit of my football career. We know his credibility in that space we know what he's like as a, as a person, culturally, values-wise, capability-wise. So um, I've got a heck of a lot, a lot of confidence in that perspective. Um, there's an experienced coaching group, obviously, Justin just starting out. So I think we've got a lot of the pillars in place, clearly, um, once I get an opportunity to understand a lot more about the people and the, the systems and processes, we'll look to, to go from there. What did you know about Justin? What did you make of his appointment? Yeah, it's... it's Difficult for me to comment in any detail other than um, the process that I went through, which was exhaustive, professional, and um, I think uh, really indicative of the organisation. For me, it was, it was something that I was able to reflect upon, um, was clearly one that was similar to that of the senior coach. Um, you know, I've spoken briefly to, to Peter about that process. So, you know, I'm a big believer of, of, of now been a part of appointing um, three senior coaches, a couple at the Bulldogs and assisted from a consultancy perspective at the Suns and um, there's never a silver bullet with these things and ever you know, absolutely certain but it's about the process that you go through to achieve that. I know of Justin, I uh, had a great chat to him today from a, a cultural um, values perspective, I don't think there's, there's anyone better and clearly he's incredibly talented in knowing the game and, and being able to... Um, to, to work from that capacity. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about what that can be. Well, I mean, what was going on with uh, trade period at the moment, yep. of course, and, and still football department appointments? Do you consult from, from now in terms of um, Brad Hill's one that sort of springs to mind? Yeah. Do you, you have any say? Were you talking to Billy about that, or are you happy to have them? Again, it, it, from my experience at the Dogs, I obviously have a, a pretty extensive football background, and whilst I would. Um, at that point in time, be involved and understand what's going on. You're never going to get me picking the halfback flanker uh, for, for a match day. I'm a CEO, absolutely um, give autonomy to the people in those positions, um, ensure that they've got what they need to make all the, the decisions. The fact is, I'm you know, literally standing in front of you guys. So I haven't got the requisite level of understanding and knowledge to the level that Peter and the recruiting list management team do. Um, complete another faith in them. Clearly I'll be understanding a bit more in coming weeks, but certainly not at a point now where I can pass any significant judgment. Simon, what was it about your pitch that you think helped win the selection committee over? Um, I have to ask Dale that specifically, but I, I think, uh, as I mentioned on, it felt to me that there was a coming together of circumstances that meant that there felt to be a, a suitable opportunity. There, um, I've been in and around the game and relatively close to it over the last few years um, and there has been the odd opportunity to potentially come back in and it wasn't right for me and, and timing wise and that type of thing. Um, you know, hark back to our, our, there's a personal element to it as well in relation to we've got a, Lucinda and I got a young family, we think it's a phenomenal opportunity for us to come to a state like this and embed ourselves within the Fremantle family but kept coming back to um, 
the potential this club has from a supporter and uh, a membership base that we've already seen when it's up and going, what that can be. Um, you, know, you go through a list of elements that you know, tend to, to categorise an opportunity for a club to really explode and there's a whole lot lining up from that perspective. Hell of a lot of work to do. Um, understand that there's, there's more challenges in this industry than, than there is pats on the backs and um, I just, you know, the focus for me was on the people that I w w will work with and for and a lot of boxes were ticked from that perspective. Do you have any in terms of membership for this club? Um, again, it's probably a bit early for me to suggest exactly what that'll be. Clearly we would want growth. Um, as I said, there's, it's, it's an interesting time um, in the sense of going from a stadium that was at capacity to one that there is a bit of capacity for us. So we need to realign a little bit on what that means for the way we service our members and the opportunity that we provide them. Um, so yeah, I'll qualify that by saying it's a bit early for me to put an exact number on it, but having met the membership team only this morning and seeing the activity that they're up to, um, like to think with you know a, a relatively fresh team from a leadership perspective within the organisation, um, that our members and supporters will be pretty enthusiastic about jumping on board next year. What do you know about the history of the Fremantle mm. Footy Club? I guess the iconic moments that make up the character of it. Yeah, um, well, my career. Uh, so I, my first year in playing at the Swans was in um, 1994. So obviously was really well aware of Frio coming in. Actually lived with um, Darren Gasper, who obviously never played for this club, but was a South Frio boy. And so he and I, in that period when the club were coming in, he gave me a really good understanding of of what was occurring. A lot of his mates were obviously being playing, play, being playing and that type of thing. And I've just, yeah, I've just had this underlying respect for the footy club. It hasn't done it easy, clearly. Um, I love that significant heritage perspective that I think a, a lot of people out east probably wouldn't appreciate that much, um, given the, the significant history within, this uh, within the town itself. And yeah, I, I keep coming back to that enduring memory of that game afterwards, just to see what this club is capable and when it's up and going, what it can do is, is pretty exciting. Can you sing the song tomorrow about what? Uh, I wouldn't like to be put on the spot, but now you've set that task, I'll uh, absolutely set about <laughs> making sure I can. Dale, what impressed you about um, someone's application? I guess it was important that someone with AFL experience took the job for you. Yeah, look, um, I, I think where we've landed, and you know, I have to say, uh, Jared Daniels uh, assisted us through the process, and it was a really thorough process, and um, a really long, long list, and, and we sort of came came back into a short list and then got to work. And you know, one of the things that stood out. Uh, to us was really what I explained before was that combination of um, playing at AFL level within two significant clubs, you know, significant career, 181 games, but then um, the commercial acumen that's been gained uh, for Simon along the way, uh, both through working, you know, in commercial enterprise with um, Lease Plan and, and then now with Bastion, but, you know, a significant amount of time at Western Bullies as CEO there as well. So, you know, that's that's a really sort of rich background to come to this opportunity with. But I think to the character of the individual um, going through our process of you know interview process, um, it was really unanimous to the panel um, that that we were making the right decision and the right choice. And uh, I personally undertook you know the reference checking and and uh, just outstanding references that that we're able to obtain and, and really deep conversations. So that that's really you know. We, we knew we were on the right track and that's really cemented it for us. So really highly excited. Uh, been a big week for us this and uh, Josh Carr uh, returning to Freo as well. Simon, how is Fremantle perceived on the East Coast? Um, I think, it, it, again, I love the question from media in particular and we had a period of time at the Dogs where our relevance was questioned. And I, I think it's in direct proportion to how you're going a lot of the time. Um, you know, and that patch in sort of from 2012 to 2016, when the guys were up and running, you know, the, the likes of Pavlich and Fife, these, it's seen as a club, I think, that's produced superstars of the competition that has, um, you know, a, a now what's regarded as a rich history and wearing a tie that's got 25 years. I think my underlying feel is that there's a respect, but there's also opportunity for that to grow as well. Being the sleeping giant, would you say? Yeah, yeah, they're your words, but yeah, <laughs> I, um, I, yeah, absolutely. I think you, you hear the, the, the tone of, of what I'm talking to you about. There's, um, you look back in history of where it's been from a membership perspective and of average game attendances, even TV ratings, and 
you know, from early on, it started to get some significant support and following, and I think uh, the opportunities for that to grow are, are limitless. <laughs> well, I, I know Pav and I think he's a superstar. He was a clear superstar on the field and I think he's a superstar off the field. I don't know Nathan yet, but he's our current captain, so if you're going to push me, uh, I think I know where I have to vote. <laughs>